and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to pick up where we left off last night. Do you remember we spoke about punishment for disobedience? And your granddaughter Lauren was so wonderful in participating with me and sharing with the congregation what she had learned in her communion lessons earlier in the day. We talked about how those who commit an offense have to pay the price for that offense. With that in mind, recall with me one of my favorite movies, National Treasure. Nicholas Cage plays a fortune hunter, part of a family of fortune hunters going all the way back to revolutionary times. He believes that somewhere the Founding Fathers, with secret codes and messages, have laid out a path to a vast treasure. By the end of the movie, you know, they found the treasure, but they've also been captured by the FBI. And in this particular scene, the character Ben, played by Nicolas Cage, is sitting there with the FBI agent. And the agent says, you know I'm going to have to arrest you. Ben says, yeah, I know. Here's the Declaration of Independence that I stole. The agent is surprised. Have you just given it back to me? Yes. Ben, you really don't understand the nature of a bargaining chip, do you? <laughs> ben says, well, yeah. I do have some conditions for giving it back. First of all, I want my family name cleared. Secondly, these two people who participated with me, they get off free. Not even a post-it note in their files. Personally, I would really, really like to avoid going to jail. And I love the agent's next line, Ben, somebody's going to have to go to jail. Turns out it wasn't Ben, it was someone else, a co-conspirator. But it brings up tonight's point, that Jesus died because somebody had to take the punishment for our sins. Now we've stripped most of the cloths off our altar. I'm dressed all in black, no pretty cross around my neck. It's a somber night, a serious night. But it's not a sad night. Now, Christy, you said it best the other day on Facebook, how curious it is that the worst day in history and the best day in history are separated by only three days. Tonight was the worst day in history 2,000 years ago, but not today. Because of our perspective in history, we now understand why Jesus did what he did. Somebody had to be punished for our sins. And he was. And so tonight as we gather, we give thanks that Jesus was willing to do that for us. To endure all that we've been reading as we've gone through the stations of the cross tonight. To ponder Jesus' suffering and the beatings, and the path of sin he had to walk. But at the same time, we're humbled because we know he did it for us. Throughout the New Testament, St. Paul makes many references to how our sinful self needs to die with Jesus on the cross. So I submit to you tonight that those of us who are gathered here in Calvary's shadow, who stand with the women and the apostle Jesus loved at the foot of the cross, recognize that our sinfulness can die with Jesus. Throughout the Lent season, many people of faith go through some kind of spiritual or physical discipline. They give up chocolate. 
they give up smoking, they give up alcohol. I, I chose to give up Brussels sprouts, <laughs> asparagus, and excessive exercise. And I'm happy to report to you that, for the most part, I've been pretty successful <laughs> in those disciplines. But it hasn't been easy. And tonight is a night when I can take the sinful desires in my body and in my mind and put them to death with Jesus. Hmm. I think I said that last year. I think I said that two years ago. Hmm. Huh. I think I've said that every year. Every year, it seems, I need to put my sinful nature to death. Wouldn't it be cool if it was a one-time affair? If you gave to God the sinful nature of your hearts and said, Lord, take it. And then it was gone forever. And you could spend the rest of your life in bliss serving the Lord, preaching his word, carrying out his compassionate message of love to the people in need of what you have to offer. Yeah, that'd be great. And maybe the IRS is going to contact all of us on April 15th and say, April Fool, we're sending you money this year. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Nope. Fact of the matter is, giving my sinful nature to God so that it can die with Jesus on the cross is not a one-time experience. It's not even an annual opportunity on Good Friday. It's a daily experience. In fact, it's an experience that, I don't know about you, but it occurs for me multiple times throughout the day. Now, it's like the old movies from the 50s where somebody's tempted to do something, you know what I'm talking about, and there's a little angel over here whispering in his ear. And then there's a little devil over here whispering in his ear. And sometimes the guy will flick the angel off and go do what he wants to do. I feel like that. And it reminds me of an old story. It's come from many different origins. The version that I heard concerns a Sicilian wise man. And a young boy comes to him sitting in his vineyard and he says to this wise, ancient Sicilian, Hey, Godfather, so many times I want to do what's good, but I wind up doing what's bad. How do I control that? How do I do the good stuff and avoid the bad stuff? And the Godfather says to him, It's like two dogs at war in your mind. One is for good, the other is for evil. The kid says, yeah, but Godfather, how do I know which of the two dogs is going to win? And the wise Sicilian says, the one that wins is the one that you feed. That's why it's a daily struggle for us as Christians. We're still surrounded by temptation, and every time we give in to it, that dog gets stronger. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. I met with my accountant earlier this afternoon, hence the render unto Caesar illustration a few moments ago. She's down in Corona, Main Street and Highway 91, within a few blocks of there. I left her appointment at about 3.30 and traveled up here for church to meet Madeline for supper. Now, if you've ever been through the Corona Norco area, after 3.30 on a Friday afternoon, you know the traffic's going to be a little ugly. So my wife suggested to me, with love, I'm sure, in her heart, and a desire for my mental well-being, honey, my husband, don't take the freeway. There'll be too much traffic. Go up Main Street. It turns into Hamner, and when you get 
all the way to Limonite, take a right hand turn. There's just two challenges with that, my bride. The first is that there was an awful lot of traffic on Main Street and Hamner as well. Drive 50 feet, stop at the red light. Wait for the green light, drive 50 feet, stop at the red light. I could have handled that. But do you have any idea how many fast food joints there are on Main Street Hamner in Corona Norco? On a Friday afternoon when I'm hungry? Twice I pulled over. Twice I pulled into one of those places. The one with the funny German name, <laughs> Wiener Schnitzel. And I prayed, Lord, help me. Because I really want some corn dogs. And I really want some hot dogs. As we sang, the Lord has promised good to me. His strength my soul secures. There wasn't a single thing on those menus that did not include chili. <laughs> and out of concern for you, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> I was not going to load up on a bunch of chili dogs and chili fries before coming here into church with you this evening. As it is, we have doors open for ventilation. <laughs> McDonald's, Del Taco, Taco Bell, Jack in the Box, and the ubiquitous AM, PMs, and Circle K stores. Just one stinking opportunity to pollute my body after the other. Praise God. I made it all the way to Valley Way and Mission Boulevard without another stop. And I felt so good. That good dog was arr, 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 barking strong. I met my bride, went into farmer boys, farmer boys, farmer brothers, whatever it is. And I looked at the menu, and this little cutie patootie at the counter said, what can I get for you? And with the voice that came from over here, I heard myself saying, I'll take one of each. And I pretty much did. I ordered a boatload of food. I could have fed Nicaragua with the food I consumed. And I'm standing here before you to now with a bellyache like you wouldn't believe. And I've got nobody to blame but myself because I gave in to the barking of that dog. I gave in to my own selfish, personal desire, totally ignored the angel on the shoulder. I had to go back and get her later on. <laughs> and stand here tonight realizing, blew it again. But see, the beauty of it is, Jesus died once, but the effect was for all time. And he did that for two reasons. One was because he believed I was worth it. Now, I wasn't too thrilled with myself, sitting there with my hamburger that was taller than it was wide and a whole load of french fries and then flag the girl down and say, I want to try some of that clam chowder while you're at it. Just give me a cup. She brought me a pot. <coughs> I didn't want to insult her, so I ate it. With the crackers. It was good. And I ate it all. Yeah. It's a good thing there wasn't some guy outside going, hey buddy, you got any spare change? Because I'd probably still be standing back there crying. No, Jesus died for me because I'm worth it. He died for you because you're worth it. There's a book that I give to couples when I'm prepping them for their weddings. It's called The Five Love Languages. 
And if God is good, we're going to be able to remember the five of them right now. It's words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, physical touch, and quality time. The curious thing about these love languages is that I'm sure you know how you show love to Reed. But Reed doesn't realize that that's not necessarily the way you like to feel love. And there's an example in the book where the woman says to the husband, you never show me how much you love me. And his answer is, well, whose new car is that in the garage? <laughs> because his idea of showing love is gifts. She's not interested in the car. She'd take an old beater if he'd sit on the couch and watch some chick flick with her. Because that's her love life. Jesus shows his love language to me. I don't, I don't care for gifts. I feel uncomfortable when people give me gifts. And the reason for that is I feel I'm not worthy of those gifts. I don't feel I'm worthy of what Jesus did for me. But he did. He believed I was worthy enough. And because he had that high of value placed in me, he was willing to offer his life for me. So that my sinful nature could be put to death with him on the cross. Luther says it was not with gold or silver that we have been purchased, but with Jesus' holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death, that we might be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Now there's another reason why the act of the cross is important for us. But I'm going to save that till Sunday. Let's continue on page 10 of our worship folder. Amen.